Hi, coffee beans. How's it brewing? Today I'm going to be attempting some clay charms. Now, about a week or so ago, I asked you guys on Instagram what kind of clay charms you guys would like to see. And you guys gave me some really awesome suggestions, um, especially kind of some summer themed ones. But you also suggested things like cakes, my cat screaming at me. Ridiculous. You're adorable. Ever since I did my Animal Crossing clay, I have gotten so many comments from you guys asking me to do more. And I was like, yes, absolutely. I love working with clay. And I worked with clay a lot several years ago. It has been a while. And I definitely overestimated my skill level with clay. <laughs> And this is the monstrosity that I came up with. <laughs> it was supposed to be a flamingo pool floaty with a cat in it. And I mean, I guess the flamingo floaty is okay. The cat looks horrible. The flamingo floaty took me forever, like a ridiculous amount of time. So by the time I got to the making the little cat, I had just basically given up. So I said, you know what, forget this. And I took a step back for a day. And I decided to come back and start it square one, as if I've never worked with clay before. There is this YouTuber who I follow. I absolutely adore her. She is the queen of polymer claim charms, and her name is Creative Rachie. I will put a link to her fantastic channel in the iCard and in the description down below. She has some really awesome tutorials for beginners, so I said, you know what? Let me just go watch one of those and follow some of her tutorials. <laughs> So I'll show you my process for making some of these charms, but I'm not going to give you a complete in-depth tutorial because this is her tutorial. So if you'd like some instruction on how to make these charms, you can go check her out. But don't worry, I did make three extra charms all on my own at the end of this video, which I will show you. So I used this video to follow her tutorial to make the donut, the bunny, and the strawberry. So I started with the donut because I thought that would be the easiest, and I've actually never made a donut before, so I thought, you know what, why not give this a try? And it actually enabled me to use my ball tool, which I hadn't ever used for this purpose, for creating a donut shape. So I took my beige tan clay and rolled it into a ball, kind of into a dome shape, and then I used a really stiff paintbrush to push all over it to create kind of like a pastry baked effect. And then I used my toothpick to make a hole in the donut and then my ball tool to kind of round it out. And I couldn't decide what flavor donut I wanted to make this, so I decided to go with blueberry. So I rolled out a really thin strip of my blue clay. And actually this took me a while to get the right size. Um, so this took a couple of tries, but what I ended up doing was pushing it into a circle and then I used my fingers to kind of stretch it out a little bit and thin it out a little bit. And then I pressed that onto the donut and then pushed my toothpick back through to recreate the hole in the center. Then I wanted to make some blue sprinkles to kind of look like blueberries. So I rolled out a really, really thin snake of blue clay and cut little pieces and rolled those into tiny little balls. And then I stuck that all over the frosting. So far, Rachel's tutorials are super easy to follow that this was my first try. I didn't have to redo anything and I made this donut and I think it looks so cute. So I'm gonna move on to the bunny because I'm bunny so I need to make a bunny, right? And plus this bunny is so stinking cute. So I started off with some white clay and made a little dome for the head. Then I rolled two little balls of white and kind of pressed them into a sort of teardrop shape. Then I also did the same with some pink and pressed that on for the inside of the ear and then cut off the bottom half so it had a kind of a flat straight edge. And then I pushed that onto the back of my little bunny's head. And I also kind of rolled down one of the ears so it looks like it's kind of flopped over because I just love it when bunnies have a flopped over ear. <laughs> I think it's super cute, so why not? Then I took my brown clay and I rolled two little balls for the eyes and I pressed those onto the face. And I also used that same brown to roll the thinnest, absolutely tiniest snake ever. 
and trimmed that into a really small size and made that into a mouth. It is really hard to curl these little snakes into kind of a smile shape, so I found the easiest thing for me, especially because I'm so shaky, is to put one corner of the snake down onto the face and then kind of curl and press as I work, and that kind of helped me to create the little smile. Then I also rolled out some pink balls for the nose and the little cheeks. I was really, really nervous to make this bunny. I didn't think it was going to turn out well at all, but it's so stinking cute. Oh my gosh. Normally in the past when I've made little kawaii charms, I usually paint the faces on. I don't sculpt them out of clay, but this time I wanted to challenge myself and follow her tutorial, so I did everything with clay and it is so much cuter than painting the faces on. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. I don't know what it is. I think because it kind of sticks out a little bit, it's kind of like a 3D face rather than flat, you know, painted. I'm so happy with it. And again, her tutorial was really easy to follow. The last charm I'm gonna make from her tutorial is the little strawberry. And I mixed together a whole bunch of colors to get the perfect strawberry color. I did some of my hot pink, I did some translucent, and I also did a little bit of my pale pink until I got a really cute kind of pastel strawberry red color. It was kind of hard to roll into a strawberry shape. <laughs> so I started with a ball and then kind of pressed it onto my work surface so that it was more of a cone shape with like a flat top. Um, it was truthfully kind of tricky. I don't know why I had a hard time with that. Then I took some of my pastel green and rolled five little balls out of that and then kind of bent them into diamond shapes, kind of teardrop diamond shapes. And then I used my toothpick to create indents in the leaves. And then I pressed them to the top of my strawberry. And then the last thing was to make the little holes for the seeds. So I took my tiny ball tool and I just pressed little holes all over the strawberry for where the seeds would go. I'm really happy with this little strawberry. <laughs> it's so cute. I do feel like it's missing a face. Like I feel like it needs just a little tiny kawaii face on here somewhere. But I just think it's so simple and cute. I think this would make an adorable necklace for the summertime. Okay, so now that I feel comfortable kind of playing with clay again and I feel like I've created three successful charms, I want to try and make some of my own. And I still kind of want to go with the summer theme, so I'm going to make a watermelon. But I'm going to try and make the watermelons cute like how Rachel does, not just plain watermelons, so fingers crossed. So to make my watermelon, I took my pastel pink with the tiniest bit of the hot pink and some of my translucent clay, and I mixed it together to get a really nice watermelon color. Then I took my white clay with some translucent and my green clay with some translucent and rolled those into long flat snakes with the help of my roller. I pushed the pink into a nice round kind of disc shape, and then I wrapped my white and my green around the pink and I trimmed it to size and then I trimmed it with my blade which was super tricky and I think I cut the sides a little bit but yeah it's fine. <laughs> it is what it is. Then because I want to make two halves of the watermelon I cut it in half with my cutter. So I decided I was going to turn these into little kitties. I'm going to make a mama kitty and a baby kitty. So to make the ears I used the same light pink clay that I used for the watermelon. Rachel suggests to make pointy ears that you squish it into a diamond shape and then cut it in half and then now you have two equal triangles so I did that for both the big cat and the small cat and I blended those onto the watermelons. Now that the ears are attached, it's time to move on to the faces. So I rolled out black for the eyes and pressed those on and moved on to the mouths. To make the mouths, I did the same thing that I did for the bunny charm. I rolled a black snake out really, really, really thin and cut little tiny pieces and pressed them onto the watermelon. And to kind of mask where the mouth meets in the middle, I took two little small pieces of black and I attached them for the noses. And then I rolled out some more snakes from the black clay for whiskers. I had a hard time getting the black snake to stick to the clay and not to my tools, so it kind of got a little wonky. 
And I almost forgot the most important part of this watermelon were the seeds. So I made little indents with my toothpick and then rolled out some black and gently pressed it into the indents for the seeds. And then I also made little indents with my toothpick and my ball tool and added a little ball of the hot pink to the inside of the ears. It got a little messy on both ears because my hands were shaking so bad. I don't know why I'm so shaky now. It couldn't be all the coffee I drink. Actually, no, I've been cutting down on my coffee. <laughs> my coffee intake. Moving on. I didn't really leave myself enough room for the seeds because of the faces and because I forgot that, duh, watermelons have seeds. <laughs> so I do think they're kind of in a weird spot. But overall, I think this is super cute and I am really proud of these little charms that I made. Okay, now moving on to my last charm and this is an idea I have had in my head ever since starting this project and failing miserably with the flamingo floaty. <laughs> um, is a little snail, just like a little sparkly snail with a little like garden hat. I don't know why. I keep picturing a snail wearing a garden hat and it's like the cutest thing ever. So I really like the idea of the snail's shell being this really pretty kind of sparkle. So I took my pastel purple with translucent and my opal clay which has these really pretty glitter kind of flakes in it and I mix that up really really well and I rolled that into a snake and then rolled that into a really thick spiral for the shell and I cut off the excess. Then I took my dark purple and rolled that into a snake and pressed that to the bottom of the shell. Um, I left space for the head and I also made it a little bit shorter by pinching and pulling the clay at the end for the tail. Then I rolled another small ball of the purple and blended that onto the body and onto the shell. Then the hat was actually kind of tricky but I'm really happy with it. I took some of my brown and mixed in some of my white to lighten it up and I made a disc shape. Then I took another little ball of that color and pressed it into kind of a dome shape and I pressed that onto the disc and I blended them together and then to kind of mask where they blended together I took some hot pink and rolled it into a snake and wrapped it around like a ribbon and then I pressed that onto my little snail's head and I pressed it down pretty firmly so I made sure it would stay and I don't mind if it gets kind of squished in the back or on the side by the shell as long as it stays on the head. To make little antenna for my snail, so I rolled out a thin purple snake and cut it in half and then placed those two little antenna on the top of the hat so it looks like they're poking through. And then the finishing touch was to make the face. Um, I decided to make the face really simple this time, so I did two little eyes out of black and then just a little tiny mouth that's a little U-shaped mouth. And then I also gave her some little pink cheeks. And this is so stinking cute. It's not exactly what I envisioned. Actually, I envisioned that she was like on vacation and would have like sunglasses. Like how stinking cute would that be? But I'm still really happy with this. Now before baking is when I want to add my eye pins. So I have just these plain kind of eye pins that I got at Michael's, but in order to make them fit into my charms, I need to cut them down in size because these are more for like bigger jewelry. Before adding my pins, what I decided to do was let these chill in my refrigerator until they got a bit more firm. It is pretty hot here in Washington right now, surprisingly, and so <laughs> my clay was so soft. So chilling these in the refrigerator really helped. So, because I want to turn my strawberry into a really simple necklace, I took one of my eye pins and cut it a bit shorter. And I just pushed that right into the center of my strawberry, right in between the stem of the leaves. And I pushed the eye pin in nice and slow to not squish the strawberry, but because I chilled them in the refrigerator, it helped a lot to not squish it. The other one that I wanted to turn into a necklace is the mama kitty, or the big kitty. So I took two eye pins and I cut them a little bit shorter. So I really, really carefully push them in at an angle on both sides of the watermelon so that a chain can connect on either side. I think that will look so cute for the summer. 
And then for my snail, I thought it would be so stinking cute as a planter stake. So my husband has quite the green thumb, we have learned, and he has so many plants outside. And we have a couple smaller plants inside. So I decided to take one of my small cocktail sticks, it's rounded on one side and pointy on the other side, and I really, really gently pressed that through the body of the snail and into the shell. Then I baked all of my charms following the package instructions. For the strawberry, the mama kitty, and the snail, I removed the eye pins and the wooden cocktail stick, added some super glue, and then stuck them back inside each of the charms. That way I know that the eye pins and the wooden cocktail stick will not fall out. My husband suggested that the bunny would make a really cute ring, so I attached that to a ring blank with some super glue as well. I decided that for the blueberry donut and the little baby watermelon, that I would turn these into super cute refrigerator magnets. So I just took some super glue and I attached small magnets to the back. I also coated all of these in UV resin to help protect all of the little details and make sure they don't fall off. And they're all done! I have to say that this project did not start out well and I got really, really discouraged. The flamingo floaty was such a cute idea in my head, but I could not figure out the right way to do it and to make it. And so I just want to say a huge thank you to Creative Rachie for making these beginner tutorials because even though I'm technically not a beginner because I used to make clay charms, it's been so long that her tutorial was really easy to follow and really helped me get back into clay charm making. So if you're interested in making clay charms and you're just starting out, then I highly recommend checking out Creative Rachi. I, for one, am definitely going to continue following some of her tutorials until I can get more comfortable making charms again. Let me know in the comments below which charm was your favorite. Also, what other charms should I try making in the future? I think ones that I haven't really made that much of are food charms, like pizza or cakes or donuts, like my donut that I made today. So I would love to know what you guys would like to see. And if you like this video and you want to see more, then make sure you subscribe. You can click the little bell to get notified of when I post. I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Love you a latte.